So let's just think about this example. We have this epidemic spreading model, which was kind of big business for the at, at, at the pandemic period and etc. And of course, we, we are interested in on networks. So but I'm not going to give you some full comprehensive study about this epidemic spreading, which can be possible, but it's not really the main purpose. So I will just introduce the mean field theory in the context of this epidemic spreading model. So for example, the if you are familiar with uh, some epidemic spreading models starting with some characters like a uh, capital F, and so it's called there are lots of uh, variants of the epidemic spreading model called so-called SI model or SIS model or SIR model or SIRS model. I will describe what this S and I and R means. So usually when we talk about this epidemic spreading model, we, so in this case, we, of course, we have to think about this network system. So here, each node here, each node here can be susceptible or as state, meaning that it's healthy state, but it's possible to get the epidemic or normal or regular state. And it can be infected. I. And it can be recovered, recovered from the epidemic or sadly removed. It's kind of a well, recovered and removed are, I mean, for an individual, it's a whole opposite case, but for epidemic spreading, it doesn't, it, it could be the same if this recovered means immune. So permanently or temporarily, uh, permanently or temporarily, this recovered, if we assume that this recovered state would not get the, the infection or epidemic, by naturally cut this epidemic or get vaccinated, we can consider this as a immunized. So the, basically the epidemic cannot penetrate this uh, recovered state. Of course, we cannot, the removed node is not penetrable because it, it does not exist in the network anymore. So all of these states are just transition between different node states based on this spreading of the diseases. So what kind of model we use would be determined by, I mean, how detailed do we want to model the real epidemic system? And one of the introductory material for this SI or SIS or whatever model is that writing down the differential equation to describe this system. So let's start from the most basic model, SI model. So the SI model is a simplest one, of course. It describes that a susceptible node, if, if a susceptible node is encountered or uh, connected or in contact with the infected node, there's a certain rate. This can be probability or larger number, but there's some kind of a probabilistic variable called uh, beta, which is the only parameter in this model. So with uh, this parameter beta, this, if S 
is in contact with I, this S node become I. It's a typical scenario, which is uh, quite intuitive. So if you have a, so if you have a dinner with some friend with COVID, there is a certain possibility that you also got the COVID. Yeah, this is quite a natural situation. Then, it's a nice exercise to derive the differential equation to describe the fraction or density of S or I node in the whole population, which is, of course, written like this. So the meaning is that the change of, or the, the rate of change of this susceptible population will be always decreased because in this case, there is no way that this I node recover to S node. If it's possible, it's called SIS. So this is the simplest one. Once you got the COVID, the terrible imagination, but once you got COVID, you, there's no way you got recovered soon. So in this simplest model, as you can see, it is always, it should be always negative because there's no way that this susceptible population is uh, become larger. But what's the terminology? Let's put this minus sign here first because it always decreases but we can consider that suppose we don't have any susceptible individual left then there's nothing to be decreased more so you can consider that this Decreasing or the rate of decrement of this susceptible population should be proportional to susceptible population itself. Because if we have uh, 10 susceptible, you, you can imagine the scenario. So first scenario is that the, if we have a 10 susceptible ind individual and the second scenario is that we have a hundred susceptible individual and there's a, Certainly, uh, for the latter case, there are 10 times more susceptible individuals. So there's a higher chance of uh, the whole scale is, uh, would be 10 times in that case. So it should be proportional to S. And the other factor is that the fact that we, this S individual should be in contact with I to get infected. So this should be proportional to I as well, product term. And if you really want to have a clear, if you really want to match this time scale, suppose this individual S randomly interact with other node, then the chance that this individual encounter I node would be, of course, it should be divided by the whole population, like this. If the total number of nodes is large n. And of course, even if this node encounter i, there is, a, there is still a chance that it's not infected. So we need this beta parameter. So beta is beta control the probability that this S individual got infected as a result of the contact with I. So we need some extra parameter here. So this is a typical differential equation to describe the decreasing or decrement of the susceptible popula the population. And of course, we need the counterpart. This, if we increase, or if we have the decrement of the S population, all of the 
decrement would be increment in I population. So naturally, this should have with the same logic, we have beta s i over n. If we sum of these two right-hand side, it must be zero, which corresponds to the fact that uh, the total population is uh, conserved. The number of total population is conserved. So this is typical way, or we can even just write down this as a uh, beta i and 1 minus i over n because n should be s plus i there's no neutral node here it's either s or i so and you can solve this differential equation perhaps not easily because this may look quite simple but it is actually nonlinear so it's not really a exactly solvable. So, but of course you need, you have a computer to solve this thing, numerically solve this thing. And that is what happens when we have this situation. And eventually, yeah, of course, eventually for finite population, every node will be infected eventually. I mean, as long as it is uh, connect, connected in the population sense. So in this case, I mean, we cannot have uh, some ideal future that someone, the, the whole population is recovered from uh, epidemics. The only thing they can do is the make this beta exponent, make this beta uh, parameter small as small as possible to delay the whole delay the spreading of the whole population but it will be eventually spread it everywhere so this is a detailed explanation of this and of course we can have uh, other things like SIS for example SI so in this case there is a chance that this infected in individual can naturally recovered with the rate gamma. So we have a, not just a decreasing term, but we have an increasing term here because of this uh, recovering process. And of course, the recovering process does not require interaction between two individuals. So we only have this I uh, term, etc. And if we have a permanent immunization or removed state, we have a three variable and this can be described like this and also even more complicated situation here. This is a basic treatment about this SI model. But if you recall, I was talking about this network structure initially. But from this network structure and I just switch to this equation and there is no element of network here at all then what's happening that is my question so for example if we are really want to describe everything for example then we have to actually have this detailed equation so suppose we have this node index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then, actually, if you really want to simulate or if you really want to observe every possible dynamics here, then we have to consider that the probability of node i becomes susceptible and node i become infected node one not i so and there is a probability that node, node two become s and node two become i so etc so we need all the in total we need actually 17 variable and one thing we noticed is that 
to describe this dynamics about the probability that node 1 become S. To change the rate of change, we have some element about SI. And of course, we need the element about I2 because the fact that this reflects the fact that the only neighboring size of this I is a 2. So that kind of element is it. So it's a quite complicated function. So in principle, in principle, we need differential equation or we need in total 14 differential equation to solve. And all of them are in principle can have a different functional form because this one only has a one friend, but this one has a three friend. So it will involve like a three other variables, etc. But instead of doing this, I just write down this equation. In other words, I completely remove or I completely ignore the identity about the individual node here. I just consider this fraction of S and fraction of I without any detailed consideration of the interaction structure here. And as I already hinted, the key factor is here. So the fact that we put that term i over n means that a certain node, the probability of a certain node interact with i node will be just proportional to i over n. In this case, this actually represents the fact that under the, under the assumption that all of these interactions are fully connected without any non-trivial omission or addition of edges. So in a way, this simple equation actually describes the situation where this is node of interest. You know that in reality, there are some or node not connected. This is some non-trivial among them. Connected, not connected, etc. So this is reality. So if, if you really want to solve this problem exactly, then we should consider all the possible interaction or non-interaction. I mean, of course, we don't need to consider this, but anyway, it's uh, all the complicated interaction. But this equation actually highly simplifies the situation by this scenario. All of these other system or other node as a single single node which can be treated as some kind of environment or reservoir if we really borrow this terminology in statistical physics. So we grossly simplify this in the all the complicated interaction term to this single environment term. This mean field theory basically kind of ignoring the identity of each site. All of the sites will be equivalent. That is the main point.
And easier, it, it would be easier for you to understand if we think about this uh, epidemic spreading mo model again. So it, this system should, uh, in the original system, it has this uh, node identity, at least for like a, in terms of degree. For example, this node 4 has a three friend, and this node 1 has only one friend. So it is clearly, you can imagine that compared to, compared with node 1, for node 4, it is a, more likely to get infected because of this large degree. But in this mean field model, it just completely ignored the fact that these two nodes have this own different um, identity. So one way to do that is that, so let's, so there's some kind of a, a more subtle level of mean field, for example, what we can do is that it's kind of advanced level, but it's a better for you to, uh, for, it is better for me to uh, mention at this time, at this uh, stage. So first thing you can do is that instead of writing down all the equation for seven different nodes, suppose you have, so we can actually classify each node here by, for example, degree. So if we classify this node 1, 3, 6, and 7 has all degree 1, only one friend. And node 2 has a two friend. And node 4 and 5 has three friends. So before we just ignore all the identity of the node, one middle ground would be classify node here into these three categories, degree one node and degree two node and degree three node. So instead of solving these 14 different, 14 uh, differential equation, our next assumption could be, well, at least for this network, the most important identity of the node will be degree. So we can actually classify this one as, a, for example, the probability of susceptible node for degree one, and this one, and this one, and this one. And this one. So instead of solving 14 equation, by solving this six equation, much smaller case, and treating the all the nodes with the same degree as a uh, equivalent to each other. So this is a uh, not really a full mean field model, but at the same time, this is also kind of uh, ignoring some important detail. For example, of course, the it is true that these four nodes has the same degree, but of course it can be different in, in principle. So it's this treatment actually ignore the internal fluctuation inside each node, uh, each uh, degree node, the set of degree, the same degree node. So it is a, uh, kind of mean field theory, but it actually considered the differential, the difference property of the node in terms of the degree. So it is mean field theory. But not just the mean field theory, because at least this treatment can distinguish between node of a different degree. So it is sometimes called heterogeneous theory. So we use the, so in this case, we use the equation for like a, we have a 
much more complicated uh, system, complicated uh, treatment than the real growth, the real mean field model. But if the if our network of interest would have a uh, most essential element as a degree, then this heterogeneous mean field theory or two technical term by HMFT. This one could also be a kind of a next level approximation, much more accurate than the total mean field model.